All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And we have something a little different this week because we're going to dive into some deeper genetic stuff and look at some of the crazy, crazy interactions with the cryptic gene and the clown and how they interact and what weird stuff comes out of that. So it's a really, really strange kind of phenomenon. We're used to looking at allylic codons, but what happens when you go into a allylic recessive? Let's dive in. So we're going to talk about three different levels of morphs essentially. First one being a huge favorite that we all know and love, that is the clown. It's an absolute bedrock of the ball python community, probably the single most important recessive in the sense of everybody loves it and its pattern is completely different than a regular ball python, so it's endless possibilities with the clown gene. Then we're going to talk about the cryptic, and the cryptic actually started kind of by accident. So many different cryptics were kind of popped out of the blue from people who didn't know they had them. And they all kind of seem to have an original origin with reptile industries. That's down in Florida, that's the Bells. If a lot of you guys know them as the Bells. They did a lot of early genetic work with ball pythons. They had some of the first mutations, the first desert ghosts, some of the first ultramels, some of the first caramels. And they've made a lot of really amazing stuff over the years combining all those. But because they've been working on it for so long, the cryptic gene seems like it's been bouncing around in their collection for years and years. And so many of us who got animals from them early on got animals that were het cryptic without us even knowing it. The primary thing that's making them pop out is the fact that we've discovered that cryptic is a lilic with clown. And so as the rise of clowns became more and more popular, and then so many of the desert ghost animals in the country were het cryptic from the bells, people started combining the desert ghost and the clown and finding out they were hatching these crazy animals which looked like cryptics. They're absolutely beautiful, visual, very different than either parent, not a clown. And so we're figuring out what's going on here. Why are they getting these weird animals whenever we breed a desert ghost that looks normal to a visual clown? So I want to give a couple shout outs to some people I know have done some good work in this area and figured it out. And I've been discussing this along the way with them. So this is with Santiago with Eye Candy Morphs down in Houston. He's done some awesome stuff and trying to figure this out as he's reading, doing different breedings and we're discussing the results and how they all worked. Billy Rose of Mutation Creation, I sold him one of my original cryptic animals and when he bred to his clowns, he kept getting Krypton's, and he's actually the one, to my knowledge, who coined the name Krypton, which would show a, an animal that's double het for cryptic and clown. Initially, I wasn't a fan of that name, it's kind of out of the blue, but actually it's really grown on me. I think it's a great name to show those allylic animals that are double het cryptic clown, but visual, they're called Krypton's. So I wanna dive in with you and look at how these interactions work, how the genetically it actually happens with two allylic recessives and you put them together and then how we can maybe use that and define that going forward because there's a really weird kind of mental interaction that goes on there. It's hard to wrap your brain around a little bit. So let's look at it. We're gonna draw some pundit squares and dig in. All right, so we're gonna start with a pairing that a lot of people did when they first discovered that they have cryptic cryptons in their collection. So for example, say I have a clown male here. So I'm gonna call that a CC, which means it has two copies of the clown gene on either side of the lil. Then we're gonna look at one, a DG, and it's het cryptic. We wanna use K for cryptic, so we don't use C twice. A het cryptic is gonna be a visual desert ghost in this case, but it's gonna have one copy of the cryptic gene and one normal gene, which means it's only het and not a visual, because a visual would be KK. So the male over here, the clown, would throw one copy of the clown gene to every offspring, and the het cryptic would throw one copy of the cryptic gene and a normal gene. So here's the results you'd end up with. You'd end up with, I was gonna draw them all out here. You're taking one, one from each side here, so you have, these are two are het clowns. So they have one copy of the clown gene, one copy of the normal gene. So normal looking het clowns. These are double het cryptic clowns. They got one het cryptic from the mom, and of course one het clown from the dad. These two are visual cryptons. Because it's allylic, these show up on the same allele, which means there is no normal gene on either side of the allele on this spot. So this is how most people discover 
they had cryptics in their collection when they hatched out these two snakes right here. So when a lot of people did this pairing, they got these cryptons, which look very visual, like a visual cryptic. To my knowledge, you can't tell the difference between a krypton and a cryptic visually. We may find that to be different later, but right now that's how I understand it. People made these cryptons and they thought, wow, cryptic must be a codon because I took my cryptic looking animal, I bred it to a clown and I made cryptics and this clown's not had cryptic. And so that was an initial misunderstanding. We found out we took the same animal and you bred it to a normal, you wouldn't get visuals. And so that is part of the process to figuring out that it is a lilic, that you're making these double hats that look like a cryptic, but because they're double het and not homozygous cryptic, we're calling them cryptons. So the nice thing about this pairing too is this actually helps you because you know that anything that is not visual krypton is gonna be het clown. And these cannot be het cryptic. So you can get a little bit of deduction in the process of making these. So now we're gonna take and complicate this a little further and look at a different kind of permeation of how this works and how we can use this in our pairings. So now we're gonna look at what we do if we bred a krypton that has a single cryptic gene and a het clown gene. So it's a het, het cryptic, het clown, but visual krypton. We're gonna breed that to a, just a standard het clown, which would be a single gene, the clown, with a single normal gene. So these are relatively simple pairings. You could put all kinds of codoms or other recesses into these pairings, but we're gonna leave it as simple as possible. So first one you're gonna go, we're gonna go K and C. Again, K is het cryptic. We're using the K instead of the C, just so we don't mix it up with the het clown. So you have CK, KN, CC, and CN. So this animal would be Krypton. Okay, that's the visual one. These three, this would be a visual clown right here. And you end up with two left. One is Het Cryptic and one is Het Clown. But you don't know the difference between these two. Het Cryptic might be slightly visual. We're still learning kind of about that. We'll maybe do another video down the road. But these two, assuming they're not visual at all, you're unsure what they are. The nice thing is that you know what half of the clutch is right off the bat, and the other half you don't know what they are off the bat. So one more interesting interaction about these is that most time you're doing any kind of het to het pairing, multi-recesses, if they're not all visual, is you're gonna end up with possible hets. And in a way we kind of do, because we hit possible het cryptic or possible het clown, but there's a 0% chance that it's not het for one of them which is really a fascinating situation because normally instead of saying possible het, we kind of have to say it's possible cryptic, het cryptic or het clown, but it's not like 50% possible het because you know it's one of them. So it's just a really interesting way we've got to figure out the kind of the best way to describe that. It's not 50% chance that it's not het, it's a 50% chance that it's one or the other but not both. So it's very similar if you think about it in the words in the codom realm, we talk about freeways and highways, and it's 50% chance it's asphalt, 50% chance it's yellow belly, but there's no chance it's a normal. Very, very similar interaction here, but on normal looking snakes. So the last pairing we're gonna look at is actually the most interesting, has the most kind of weirdness going on, and this will be looking at a krypton to a krypton. It seems pretty simple, but in reality, the results are highly complicated. So you're doing a krypton, which is a het cryptic het clown, to a krypton het cryptic het clown. So here's what we're gonna end up with. These two snakes can only throw one of the two each. So it'll throw a het cryptic or a het clown to every baby. So we end up with our first full visual cryptic, a krypton, a krypton, and a clown. Here's what we end up with. We end up with a normal clown. That one, we know exactly what it is. A krypton, two kryptons, and a cryptic. To my knowledge right now, we can't tell the difference visually between a visual cryptic and two kryptons. So what you end up with is three animals that essentially look the same. And so these are essentially very much a similar situation to where if you just go a regular head to head. These are pos kryptons, pos cryptic. But what are the odds? We know one out of every three will be visual cryptic. So this is a 33% chance. 
and there's this two out of every three will be kryptons, so that's a 66% chance. And so we're back to our same 33, 66, pos het in a way, but they're not pos het, they're pos visual. Very, very fascinating interaction. Again, just talking about the chances of any one of these being either visual cryptic or krypton. All right, so you see how interesting this gets. We basically have the possible head interaction, but in only visuals. And we're still looking at the mathematical side of how this all works. And just want to say that, you know, rarely in any collection you're going to get exactly four eggs or get exactly the results down the spread. But what you always will get is, you know, mathematically, no matter how many eggs you have, these rules will apply and these percentages will apply given enough options, given enough time. So this will just help you kind of learn how to visualize what the chances are when you're doing any clutch. There's one more big important part to this, which is how to use this information in order to leverage your clutches and actually figure out things that you have down the road that you wouldn't know otherwise because we have a very different set of rules here that we're working with visually, although the rules are the same genetically. So it's fascinating. We're gonna come back and do another video on a clutch where we use this information to give us information about the babies that we wouldn't otherwise have. So tune in next time and we'll check that out. Be sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate every one of you. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. If you like this more dry side where we actually look at the details, let me know. That's Krypton, Plaque Festel, Spot Nose, Yellow Belly, Red Stripe. Isn't that amazing? Oh, that is crazy.